Welcome to Redemption Today Podcast. My name is Rigo Mercado, and on this podcast, I provide Bible teaching that encourages and helps Christians grow in faith, live in victory, and exercise all their redemptive rights in Christ. Let's jump right into today's Bible lesson. Hello, everybody. Today, we'll continue our study on redemption realities. And today's focus is how Jesus redeemed us from poverty and lack. So Jesus redeemed us and bought us back from sin, death, sickness, and poverty. Think about it. Before the fall of man, Adam and Eve were in relationship with God. There was no sin, there was no sickness, and there was no lack. God provided for them, and God kept and God kept them there, and He provided for them. And Adam kept the garden of God that God provided. So after the fall, the curse came in and sin entered along with sickness and poverty. So God planted a garden and God made every tree grow. God was a source of blessing and provision for Adam's physical needs. Adam tended and took care of God's garden and all of his needs were provided for. And we see this in Genesis chapter 2 verse 8 through 15. It says, The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord made every tree to grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. So notice it was God who caused the trees to grow. It was God who provided the food and the garden. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now there was a river that went out of Eden to water the garden, and from it it parted and became four river heads. So God provided rivers. He provided the food. In verse 11 it says, The name of the first river is Pishon. It is the one which skirts the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. So there is also gold there. There was there was provision. Uh, there was also minerals there. Onyx and stones were there. The name of the second river is Gihon. It is the only one which goes around the land of Cush. The name of the third river is Hedekah. It is the one which goes eastward, east of Assyria. The fourth river is the Euphrates. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden to tend and to keep it. So Adam did work, Adam tended to the garden, and he kept the garden. However, who provided it? It was God. God is the source of our provision. However, after the fall, the ground was cursed, and Adam had to work with the sweat of his brow. In verse 7 of Genesis 3, it says, And to Adam God said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree which I commanded you, saying, You should not eat of it, curse is the ground for your sake, and toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. So once Adam and Eve sinned, the ground was cursed. They had a toil in their work for the Lord. They had a toil to provide. There was obstacles and hindrances and trying to get provision for themselves. There was thorns and thistles where before there wasn't any of that. So that blessing was, was taken away. Now, what is this curse? The curse basically is the effects of sin. With it came spiritual death, separation from God. With it came poverty and sickness and disease. And the enemy is the author of all these things. Sin is what brought it upon us. However, Jesus came to redeem us from that, to take us away from those things, and he redeemed us from, from the curse of the law. Later on, God instructed the children of Israel, as you read through the scriptures, you know, his covenant people, that if they obeyed his commandments, his blessing will be upon them. And if they disobeyed, the curse of the law will be upon them, which was sickness and poverty and separation from him. The curse was and is on the earth. And God was saying if they obeyed, they will stay under the umbrella of his protection. If they didn't obey, the curse was out there already, waiting on them, because it's already on the earth since the fall of man. And we saw that in Genesis 3. However, Jesus has redeemed us from that, and he can protect us from the effects of the curse. And what does the word curse mean? Basically, it's just an empowerment to fail. Nothing goes your way. There's there's failure. So in Deuteronomy 28, when God gives the promises, he talks about what this curse is. In Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 20, as he says, But it shall come to pass, if you do not obey the voice of the Lord, to observe carefully his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, 
that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Cursed shall you be in the city, cursed shall you be in the country, cursed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl, cursed shall, cursed shall be the fruit of your body and the produce of your land, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. Cursed shall you be when you come in and cursed shall you be when you go out. The Lord was sent on you curse, uh, cursing, confusion, and rebuke you all and all you say your hand to until you are destroyed and until you perish quickly because of the wickedness of your doings which you have forsaken me. So the reason I took a moment to read that is that we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. We have been redeemed from all these things. So Jesus is our great redeemer and in Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 and talking about Jesus it says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. What is the curse of the law? We just read it in Deuteronomy 28. Because he became a curse for us. So none of those things can come upon us because now we're in Christ. Jesus obeyed. Jesus was our perfect substitute. He was he lived the perfect life. He fulfilled the law in our in our behalf. No one is perfect. No all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. However, Jesus fulfilled the law for us and that he redeemed us from the curse of the law. So again, in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. When Jesus hung on that cross, he took the curse upon himself. Why? And what was the effect of it? What was our benefit? Verse 14 of Galatians 3 says, That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So he took the curse and he gave us the blessing, the empowerment to succeed and prosper. He gave us an inheritance in Christ, the Holy Spirit, a new kingdom in him. And all the blessings of God belong to us now. We've been redeemed. We've been brought back to the garden where God is our provider and our source of supply. He gives us the grace and the ability to prosper and to increase in wisdom and favor to be our provider, to bless us so we can be a blessing to others. Now, what is the blessing of Abraham? You know, when you study the life of Abraham in Genesis 12, God chose him and said that to him that he was going to make him a mighty nation. And through his seed, all nations of the world will be blessed. And Abraham couldn't have children, so it was a promise. And Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And God said to him that, you know, I will bless you you know, to be a blessing to others. So it was through Abraham's line that Jesus came. He's the seed. He's the promised seed that through him, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. So God blessed Abraham. You see him, that God blessed him materially. He blessed them in every way, spiritually. And all those blessings belong to us. We're, we're the seed of Abraham through Christ Jesus. So the blessing of Abraham is detailed again in Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 through 8. This is part of the blessing for us. And we can relate it to our situation. You know, back then, the, the currency and their um, economy was based on produce and, and cattle and, and things of that nature. You know, today's different. But the same principle applies to how God blesses us in every way. It says here in Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 8, it says, now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, because you have obeyed the voice of the Lord your God. And it's amazing that these blessings are already ours because of Jesus. Jesus obeyed, and we're in Christ, and we're following him, and we're listening to him. And we're operating in its principles of the kingdom. And all these blessings are ours. Verse 2. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the, uh, the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. So no, no matter where you go, you know, when you leave for work, when you go about your day and you come back, the blessing of God is on you. His empowerment to excel is on you. His empowerment to prosper you. His empowerment... Uh, for you to to do well in every area is upon your life verse 4 blessed shall be the fruit of your body the produce of your ground and the increase of your herds the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks there will be increase in every area of your life because of the blessing of god on you 
Blessed shall, you, shall be your basket, and blessed shall be your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come against you one way, and they shall flee before you seven ways. The blessing provides protection from the devil and, and demonic oppression. The blessing protects us from all those things, from our enemy. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in which all you set your hand, and he will bless you in the land in which the Lord your God has given you. The Lord will command the blessing, and that blessing is upon us. It's in our storehouses. It's in, our, in every area of our lives. And everything we set our hand to, the blessing is on there. Whether it's our work, our relationships, our, you know, our schoolwork, whatever it is that we put our hand to, it increases, it's blessed, and it prospers because this blessing is upon us. So the blessing includes redemption, right? It includes being redeemed from eternal separation from Him. It includes healing, divine healing. He's redeemed us from sickness and disease. And it also includes redemption from, from lack and poverty because of what Jesus did, did. And God wants us blessed and God wants us prosperous not for ourselves, but to be a blessing to others, to be a, a distribution center for the kingdom of God, to to be able to provide for others and, and bless others. God wants to meet our needs, but in the same way, he also wants to use us to help others and meet the needs of others as a channel of his blessings. He wants to meet our needs. He wants to provide for us. He takes care of his children because he loves us, just like any parent will take care and provide for their child. God is the same way. He doesn't want us to be in lack. He provides for us. And we see this principle of God's provision through Scripture. In Psalm 23, verse 1, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In other words, because God is our shepherd, He, take, he takes care of us, and we have everything we need. We lack nothing because we shall not be in need. We will not lack nothing. And then in Psalm 34, 9, it says, Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for there's no want to them that fear him. So there's no want, there's no need, because we love him, we reverence him, he takes care of us. We've been redeemed from, from poverty and lack. In Psalm 34, 10, it says, The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but those that seek the Lord shall not want or lack any good thing because we seek the lord we will not lack any good thing because he's our provider in psalm 35 27 it says let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause yeah let them let them say continually let the lord be magnified which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants God has pleasure in our prosperity. Why? Because we favor his righteous cause. We favor his kingdom. You know, Jesus said, said seek, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added uh, to us. And in fact, in Matthew 6, Jesus talks about not to worry about what you will eat and what you will wear, what you will drink, because he provides for us. If he provides for the birds of the air and and the lilies of the field are clothed, how much more will he clothe us? Right? He says, oh, you have little faith. Don't worry. Don't worry about tomorrow. Why? Because he's our provider. And all he says to us is seek him first. Seek the principles of the kingdom. You know, give unto him, and he provides for you. And his grace is on you. He helps you. We're to seek him first. So all of our needs are met through, through Jesus. He's our great, he's our great redeemer. And then Psalm 1, 115, verse 14, it says, The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. God is our source of increase. He's the one that provides continual prosperity in our lives. And because God has blessed us and provided for us, He wants us to be stewards of, of those blessings and give back unto Him and to help and to help people with the increase He's given us. We see here in Proverbs 3, 9 through 10. It says, Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of your increase. So shall your barns be filled with plenty, and your presses shall burst forth with new wine. So when we honor the Lord with our possessions, 
He promises to bless us and to increase us and provide for us so that we can continue to be a blessing to others. He blesses us so we can be a blessing to others. In Proverbs 10.22, it says, The blessing of the Lord, it makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it. So when God's blessing is upon us and upon our work, there's no sorrow with it. He gives us joy. He gives us peace because we work unto him. That the curse, you know, in, in the garden where Adam worked with the, the sweat of his brow and toil, although we work hard, we have the grace and the ability from God and the wisdom of God to excel and prosper in all we put our hand to. He's our source of, of, of supply. It is not our job. It's not what we do, but he is the source of supply for our lives. We can trust him for all of our needs. This verse, which puts it all together. Remember, God provided the garden for Adam. He met all of his needs. And in Philippians 4, 19, it says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God is the one who will provide and meet all of our needs through Christ, because Jesus has redeemed us from lack. He has redeemed us from poverty, and he wants us blessed to be a blessing. That's part of your redemption. That's part of your redemptive rights in Christ. And you can say, God, I thank you that you're my provider. I thank you that you meet all my needs. You know, often I, I pray and I quote the scriptures like we just read. I said, God, I thank you that I lack no good thing. And I remember what King David said in the Psalms. He says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, or their children begging for bread. God is our provider. No matter what your need is, no matter what you're lacking, God is the one that provides for you, and we can trust Him in that He meets your every need. Thank you for listening to the Redemption Today podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider subscribing or even rating and reviewing so that more people can connect with us and be blessed by these teachings. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.